Hello, friends. Today I'm here to share with you some super exciting news. Andrew Stillman and the Rockstar team over at New Visions for Public Schools has answered many of our prayers. Those of us who are longtime Doctopus and Gubrick friends have been a little bit sad lately since Google Classroom came out because while Classroom does help some of our friends who aren't as script savvy in the workflow and sharing of Google Drive docs, uh, files, spreadsheets, all that good stuff. Um, there's been a lot missing in terms of the functionality that Gubrick and refreshing time of last edit and all that yummy goodness that we were used to in Doctopus. So ever since folks have been hearing about Google Classroom, they've been saying, when will we get Gubrick integration? And uh, the quick iteration station over at New Visions for Public Schools, led by the amazing Andrew Stillman, has answered our prayers in record time. So today they announced that they are integrating uh, Classroom and Doctopus together with, yes, our good friend, Gubrick. In this quick little screencast, I'm going to show you how. So the first thing that you want to do is go to your Google Classroom class, and you want to go ahead and create your assignment as normal. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Docto Assignments. I'm going to click uh, I'm going to make sure I'm on the assignment, not on the announcements. Whoops, so let's make sure I'm on assignment. I'm going to call it Docto Assignments. Um, I'm going to go, go ahead and give it a description, demo. I can set my due date and add a due, uh, a due time if I want to. But here's the important part. I'm going to click on my little drive icon to attach a Google Drive asset that I want to virtually uh, copy and pass out to my kiddos. So here's a demo assignment that I've already created. And I'm going to set it so all the students um, are going to get their own copy. That's what this drop-down menu does. So you can see some similar functionality to Doctopus there. I click on the blue assign button and bada bing bada boom. Uh, each kid is going to get a copy of this document in their Google Drive. Now you can see I have four not done, zero done. So if I switch over to my kiddo view, I have these three fake kids in my class. If I click on the class for each kid, you can see I actually have the assignments here, but I uh, uh, call them both demo assignments, so I want to click in it to find the most recent one. There's the Docto assignment. Um, I need to click on Open as the student. The reason being is the way that Google Classroom currently works is without... Um, the students actually opening the assignment, I can't see anything in the Drive folder. So if I go to that Drive folder uh, that Google Classroom created uh, for this assignment, it's empty until the students open the assignment. They don't have to turn it in, and they don't actually have to do anything in it, but they do have to click on it to open it at least once. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open on each of these kiddos. And this isn't enough, they actually have to click on the document itself, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let me open up the assignment folder here. So this is the teacher view, this one with the AUSL. And you can see that as the kids click on it, it shows up here. So the kids are able to um, continue working on it. They haven't turned it in yet, they still have edit view. As a teacher, I'm only in suggesting view right here. Um, so I can go ahead and suggest some edits. I cannot yet edit until the kids turn in, um, but the students continue working on it until they finally click the blue turn in. But now I'm able to actually see it, and now I'm ready to uh, use this in Doctopus. Now the great thing is, is I don't actually have to have the kids turn it in to be able to use it with Doctopus. I just have to have them click and open the assignment at least for the, for the very first time. So... I come over and I create a new spreadsheet. Notice there's nothing in the spreadsheet. I don't need a student roster or anything else. I click on add-ons, and if this is your very first time, you need to click get add-ons. And then you click on Doctopus here. And then I would click the plus free button. This is normally blue and it says plus free. Since I have already installed it, it says manage. Um, and that means when I click on my add-ons menu, I will forevermore find Doctopus right here. I'm going to click Launch, and it's going to open a sidebar on the right-hand side of my screen. 
So I wait for that to load. I have this little working guy here. I miss the old Doctopus GIF that, that Andrew had created, but you know, we win some, we lose some. But here's the fun part, friends. Now when I see select roster, notice that I have this great ingest Google CR classroom assignment. So instead of building my roster, I just click on that. It searches my drive for the classroom folder. I can select the classes from Google Classroom, so here's my class. And then in the class, it'll let me find the assignment, so there's that docto assignment. And because my kiddos have started, uh, by clicking on the assignment, started working on it, I can ingest it. Now, notice it found three student submissions. There's a fourth student in my class, um, Troy, who hasn't started it yet, but that's okay. So you'll see that it created the entire roster for me. It has the links to their assignment. It built all of this using that folder. Now I'm able to attach a Gubric. So if I click Attach Gubric, it takes me through the steps. Just like you had to do before the classroom integration, you do have to install the Gubric Chrome extension. If you click on this, uh, they make it super easy for you. It takes you right to the Google Web Store listing, so I could click Free, and then click Add, and then my little Gubric eyeball shows up in my Omnibox, ready to rock. Then I have to authorize it, so I can click Step 2. It authorizes it, and it just gives me a little Continue button. I scroll down and click Accept, and then it'll say that I'm good to go. Yay! It used to just have a little OK here, but now I have this nice, big, um, very obvious, you did it! So that's great. So now I can select my rubric. There's some rules for how you create the rubric. Um, you have to have whole numbers in the first row. The categories go in column one. You can look all this over in this little dialog box. It's very easy to follow. They've made it very visual and simple to see if you're getting it right or wrong. But I've already created a rubric inside of my Google Drive, um, which I can go ahead and select. So I click Select Your Rubric. And I find a spreadsheet where I created it. Here it is. This is a rubric. It does have to be in spreadsheet format. You can't do it in docs. And boom, here's my little preview. So here is my rubric that I created. Fabulous pedagogy demonstrated here. This is probably the world's most uh, thoughtful and sophisticated rubric. And then I can just go ahead and click Attach Rubric to this assignment. Let it load. Da, 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 da. And I will have Gubric attached to all of my students' classroom assignments through this Doctopus integration, just like that. Voila! So if I click on one of my students' documents, and I click on the Gubric eyeball in the Omnibox, just like pre-classroom, it'll go ahead and show me, oops, I need to authorize it again. I don't think it just, I think it's just because I didn't refresh my window, but let's go ahead and authorize it again. If I click on that eyeball, just like pre-Classroom Doctopus, it allows me to do points. It um, shades both numbers. I could do whole numbers. I can add my comments and it will submit it, submit it to the bottom. Um, it's pretty fabulous. Love it. Um, it feels just like we are used to, um, but it works really great, great with the classroom integration. Now, one of the things that uh, we need to think about as well is what if one of my students hasn't opened the assignment when I start to grade? Uh, I have a student who's been out sick or on vacation or someone transfers in. Not to worry, Andrew Stillman and his team have thought of that as well. I have a great little button called Look for New Submissions right here. And so if a student um, turn, opens up their document and it appears in my folder, I can just go ahead and click this and it will re refresh my spreadsheet spreadsheet with those students' uh, documents and listings as well. Um, and you can see Troy has opened it, so it found the new submission. Pop, it shows up right here, and I'm able to attach the rubric um, to his assignment as well because of folder permissions.
So uh, a big thank you to Andrew Stillman and his entire team for creating this really super speedy integration with Google Classroom, making these tools more teacher and student friendly. I can't wait to use this with my students on Monday, and I hope you enjoy it as well. For a few disclaimers about what does and doesn't work with, um, with this new Google Classroom integration, be sure that you check out Andrew Stillman's Google Plus post. Um, he recently posted it today, Friday, September the 12th. Um, you can go ahead and search for Andrew Stillman on Google+, or I will also put a link to that post uh, right here in this YouTube video. But he has a list of things that work and don't work with uh, this new classroom integration, um, sadly due to the lack of APIs that uh, Google has not yet opened up. So there's a few things that don't work with it. You can go ahead and check, out, check those out here on the post. But overall, this is highly functional, super easy to use, and um, infinite thanks to the team again at New Visions. Enjoy!